Hey guys, welcome to Crespi Carmine High School in Encino, California. This is Jose Dizon, and I'm here to show you the art department. First up, we're gonna learn about the teachers and find out what they do. We got Mr. Nahe in room 30. Um, I am Edward Nahe and I teach uh, Theory of Media Arts. So I have two classes of theory, uh, Applied Media Arts 1 and 2, Broadcast Journalism, and Photojournalism and Journalism, which is you know, the cell for the school newspaper. This is my fifth year teaching in Crestman. Both my parents were educators, and when I first got into the entertainment industry, I worked for a writer director, Zalman King, and ran his office for about four years. And then after I wound up doing that, um, my wife got pregnant, so I moved back to Florida to be with family. And I had all this industry experience, had no clue what I was going to do with it. And then my parents were like, well, why don't you go in and teach? And I was like, I don't know. And uh, anyway, long story short, they taught me how to write a curriculum. So everything I learned from the industry, I just put into the curriculum. And the first job that I ever interviewed in, uh, at Piper High School in Fort Lauderdale, I landed it. And the next thing you know, I was thrown into the classroom. I think the passion that I have is pretty much to create. Um, I love it when people are able to uh, take their ideas from their mind, flush them out on paper, and then go in and actually record them and, and see uh, their visions actually manifested. Um, I'm personally an artist, so you know when I do that, I know the fulfillment that I get. And I always try to make sure that every project out there is the project before, so you know that you're constantly growing as an artist. 10 years. I don't know. I, I mean, if I'm still teaching, that would be awesome. If I'm not, I mean, I would like, you know, eventually we get back into the industry. Um, you know, I've gotten so many screenplays that I've written myself, you know, feature films, that eventually I would obviously love to create my own feature and get the money to, to do that. Um, I also sing, so, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to go out, and, you know, get a band and tour and, you know, hit the world by storm with my vocals, I would love to do that. Um, I'm also a writer, you know, so I've written novels and I've written, uh, you know, screenplays. So if I was ever able to have the ability to go maybe tour doing, you know, signing other books or something like that, that would be amazing too. Um, I mean, but I'm just, I'm an artist at heart, so I have a lot of different mediums. So if anything ever took off professionally for me in that way, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that would be an ideal situation. But in the meantime, I, I love teaching, I love inspiring, and I love watching you know you guys go out and you know fulfill your dreams you know whether it's getting to the top film schools or you know getting internships with uh you know in, with industry people whatever you know i just i love seeing people pro progress and i love seeing people tap into that creative spirit and manifesting what their vision is and going from an idea to paper to whatever medium that they need to do uh to get that vision out there i think it's very important next up miss belshine in room 31. Okay, I'm Deanna Belsheim, the art teacher at Crespi and the department chair. I teach the exploring visual art, the advanced art, and the AP studio art, drawing, 2D design, and 3D design. 22 years, going on 23. I was pursuing my finishing up my bachelor's degree, and I decided that the biology science thing wasn't working for me, so I decided to go into full-time art. and. Um, as I was finishing that up, I decided to go back for a teaching credential, and I didn't like the program too much at the time, so I decided to go for a master's instead because it was much more intensive art training. So I did that, and while I started the master's program, the first semester I was asked to teach at the university. I didn't expect that. So while I was taking my uh, master's classes there, they asked me to teach, which is probably uh, 10 times better than just taking classes to be a teacher because you have to learn so much, you have to be on your feet all the time as you're you know, uh, articulating to the students and learning yourself. When I finished up teaching there, um, I was asked to go for an interview with Crespi. I sort of fell into teaching. I didn't plan to be a teacher. I was just wanting to finish up a degree in art and then pursuing art more by taking a master's degree. Before that, I worked for the government, um, whether it be federal or uh, city, and I worked at the mayor's office for part of the time, worked for the city library, and worked for health and human services. I was like a social worker. 
um, for teaching art, probably because I went, I was a daycare center growing up. I, I was, my mom was a single mom, and so she had to put us somewhere all day long to be taken care of. And so the daycare center had this incredible program at the time um, where it was, there was so much art. I think I probably did art maybe every day. And then in my elementary school, I was doing oil paintings all the time for the teachers. And I was always doing oil paintings at home, and then I would do ceramics and oil paintings at the um, daycare center. And then in junior high, high school, I was still doing art part-time. Well, about nine years ago, I asked to become a department chair. There was never an art department before Crespi. The whole time Crespi has been around since 1959. So I thought it would give us more of a, um, like a voice, a, um, we can you know, apply for a budget. At the time we were in the other building, so now uh, this building became part of a large budget and they built this building and now we have this beautiful video production lab, a beautiful music room that never existed before in, in Crespi's time. And now I have a new art room. And um, I have an architecture teacher also who teaches part-time, that's Brian Billick. And when I started the department, Mr. Monkey came aboard, he became a part-time uh, drumming teacher, and then I started getting taiko teacher, drama teacher, um, uh, video production teacher, Mr. Nahe. So if my teachers in my department are teaching part-time, they're pursuing their passion in the arts, and if they're full-time, hopefully they're teaching their passion full-time in the arts. So in 10 years, I, I expect to be still working and um, learning from you guys like I do every day, and uh, hopefully um, be able to influence a few more people along the way. Next up, Mr. Billick, up in room 24. My name is Brian Billick, and I teach honor geometry from all the architecture classes, and I advise on the year. <coughs> this is my eighth year. Well, 10 years ago, I started coaching football, um, and it was subbing, and I ended up getting a full-time job here. I originally got into the profession and, and working with students uh, because my family is, uh, are all teachers. My mom's a first grade teacher out in Valencia, and I had family back east, uncles and some more coaches and teachers as well, so it runs in the blood. Uh, out of college, I was working construction, coaching football, and that was, that was it. Again, it has to come from my mom, I would say, uh, because of all the years growing up, Working in her classroom, helping her with everything. I mean, I remember that from one of my first memories, being a little kid, helping her put bolts and boards and stuff like that. So I've always been in the school, so that's probably where I come from. Hopefully here. I mean, I definitely see myself still in the, in the profession. Uh, you know, I enjoy working with students and, and helping uh, young young students become men. Um, so I have a passion for it, so I'm we'll, we'll here, but you know, who knows where life takes you. We got Mr. Gene Salute now in room 19. So my name is Peter Jean Salute, and I teach a couple things. I teach film studies, public speaking, and junior and senior English this year. Uh, so right now I'm in the fine arts department, I'm also in the English department. And I'm also in charge of the uh, drama department as well as cantering for the masses here. This is my second year teaching at Crespi. Uh, I'm also an alumni of Crespi. Graduated back in 2006, uh, heavily involved in the fine arts department as well, so uh, I'm very glad to be here so far. Well, this was one of those stories that, as a kid, uh, I really wanted to do teaching, besides being a priest and also being an astronaut. Uh, but what really drew me to teaching uh, initially was actually that I had a, a job, which was great. Uh, but I feel that with teaching, it's really a vocation. You really have to dedicate yourself to it. Um, and I know that as far as my career is concerned as a teacher, uh, I love it. I, I think that I get the opportunity to inspire people. I get the opportunity to teach and, and give as much knowledge and, and compassion as I can as a person uh, and really connect with people and, and be happy about their own growth. And that's really what draws me to teaching. Uh, I was actually teaching at my elementary school, St. Catherine of Siena in Reseda. And uh, I started teaching there for only really about one year uh, initially. And before that was uh, was was college, so I was studying at Loyola Marymount University. I was studying theater, dance, and music, and I was studying abroad in uh, Germany and Russia. I studied at the Moscow Art Theater for about a month. Uh, but my journey in college was very eclectic. I did lots of different things here and there, uh, just like I did at Crespi as a student. So uh, teaching is kind of the, the thing that really started work. Uh, you know, I think it's it's interesting because. 
My passions lie initially in the arts. I, 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 I'm an actor, singer, dancer. Uh, I, I still love to do those things. I would really hope that I can do that later on. But I think now, at this point in my life, um, I'm on the younger end of the spectrum. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to develop my own talents to get other people to develop theirs. I think that's really where the teaching aspect rises. The discovery process of finding out what a student has and what they can provide and what they can, uh, what I can draw from them and see what's been hidden for so long. Uh, that's really the, that's really where the passion of teaching comes. I think it's been transformed from my uh, initial love of, of the arts to something that's just, uh, I'm so surprised every day with, with all of my students about how much they grow. Well, I think that's hard for anybody to say in 10 years. Uh, even for a student, I think it's difficult to say. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see what God puts out there for me. Uh, in 10 years, I may still be teaching and have a master's, or I might have a PhD in something. I might uh, be in a film. I might be on the street. Who knows? But I think the best thing is that uh, having the element of faith and knowing that whatever I'm doing, it's for the right reasons, and it's not just for me. It's for everybody else. We got Coach Mucky next, up in room 29. I'm Coach Mucky, and uh, I teach music exploration. Uh, this is my 26th year. What made me become a teacher? I couldn't play baseball, so I started coaching. <laughs> I took it as far as I could, and then <laughs> so we do the next best thing. And I just happened to uh, end up here after uh, the last guy left. Well, I coached, uh, what, seven years at Pepperdine as an assistant coach, and then I was an assistant coach at Valley College, and then I was a head coach for four years at Valley College, but I was just part-time the whole time, and then uh, this job opened up, and here I am. I couldn't play, so I taught it. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I don't have any plans of retiring or whatever, so... It's kind of a year at a time these days. And now, we have Mr. O'Brien, also in room 29. My name is Mr. O'Brien. I'm the director of the music program at Crespi High School. This is my second year at Crespi. I've always been a teacher of some sort. Um, even since I was uh, maybe 18, I had taken on uh, private lessons for percussion, drum set, things like that. Uh, so I've always been very used to the teaching environment but uh, I've never been uh, a full-time teacher until I was here at Crespi. Uh, I, I taught through high school, private lessons, things like that. But uh, I came to Crespi because uh, a friend of mine, uh, Raz Purcell, who used to, uh, who started the Tycho program here, uh, had to go and, and he was looking for people who could do the job that he was doing and uh, you know, I came to mind. So I, I came to Crespi essentially to run this Tycho program. The Tycho program at Crespi was growing, and uh, the, the administrators and, and the, the school really liked what Mr. Purcell had done with it, what he had created. So they were looking for someone to just essentially pick that up and carry it on further, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, a lot of parents and faculty have commented on how Raz was a, a pioneer. He started something new, and then I've come in and since uh, sort of polished it and, and took it to another level. Before teaching at Crespi, I was working in the film industry as a freelance film editor and sound designer. I uh, got my degree from Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. I studied film there, and I was fully prepared to make a career doing that until I came here. I was uh, very, very short notice. Uh, I had very short notice before I started teaching at Crespi that this is what I was going to be doing, but I was very excited to take on the job. Um, Unfortunately, my film portfolio now is very outdated. I've been out of the uh, circuit for quite a long time. My passion for teaching comes from the lessons that studying Taiko drumming taught me. Uh, the biggest thing that Taiko ever taught me uh, was humility. I learned to be humble in an environment where I knew nothing. And really that helped me to realize what kind of sacrifices my instructors made to teach me. My friends now at, at CSUN, where I learned to play taiko, 
uh, spent a lot of time training me. They spent a lot of their time uh, making sure that I understood not just how to play taiko, but how to understand the culture that surrounds it. And my passion for teaching comes from recognizing that they made a sacrifice uh, and that I should do the same. No one who is taught a skill like this or is taught an art form like this should go on to be a performer without ever teaching themselves. You really kind of have to give back to the community. And so to me, it's exciting to do what I do every day because the thing that I fell in love with, the, the thing that I love performing, I get to share that with other people. You know, out of 40 kids in the taiko program that we have now, some of them might go on and continue to play taiko. And just knowing that is, is just a great blessing to me. That's what I do this for and that's what that's what I love doing. Ten years from now, I see myself uh, sitting right here in the same place, maybe doing an interview with a new student. Uh, I really enjoy what I do today, and I hope that in ten years I'm still doing that. And somehow, maybe a little bigger, a little better, a little more polished. Uh, there's just there's always something to learn. Maybe ten years from now, uh, I'll be doing the same thing, hopefully. Hope you enjoyed this feature on the art department. This is Jose Dizon. Have a good one.